Did you know that you can create your own tax on hard hat that you can easily access it from the command line interface, CLI for short, to be able to quickly do anything you want? Hi, I'm KP and today on Eat the Blocks, we're gonna learn about how you can utilize some of the least known ways you can configure your local hard hat environment so that we can do much more than just the default tasks available. Let's get started. Before we get started, let's talk about Hardhat. Hardhat is a framework uh, that facilitates performing frequent tasks such as running tests, automatically checking code for mistakes, or interacting with the smart contract. You can install Hardhat by doing npm install dash dash save dev hardhat. After you install that, then you can set up a new Hardhat project with npx hardhat. Then you can create a TypeScript project here and update hardhat.config.js file. So what you can do is open hardhat config file and then add hardhat to the list of networks. You can change the chain ID to 1337, change path where artifacts will be stored, and you can also change other things like shown here. For more info on configuration, you can visit the hardhat runner documentation. Now, let's see what we can do with hardhat. For example, creating tasks in Hardhat um, are basically very easy to do, which these tasks, tasks are the core component used for automation. A task, in simple terms, is basically a JavaScript async function, asynchronous function, with some associated metadata. This metadata is then used by Hardhat to automate some things for you. And everything you can do in Hardhat is defined as a task. So as you know, there are de default tasks that come out of the box called built-in tasks, like hardhat compile, hardhat node, etc. But we can also implement our own task, and that's what we're going to do today. Let's see what are available by default by doing npx hardhat dash dash help. We can um, basically define additional tasks directly on the hardhat configuration file. Um, so to do that, first, let's go ahead and create a new task called hello, that is just going to print hello, eat the blocks viewers, nothing else there. Here you can see that the task first argument is the task name itself. The second argument is its description. And the third one is an async function. The only requirement for writing a task is that the promise returned by its action must not resolve before every um, async process it started is finished. Then you can run npx hardhat dash dash help again. And this time you'll see that our new task, hello, has been added to this help command. Now, try to run this new task we just created by doing npx hardhat hello. You can also define parameters for a particular task. So we can add an optional parameter to the hello task from before um, using the keyword add uh, optional param. Now, you can also do something like npx hardhat hello or npx hardhat hello dash dash greeting ola um, because we added the optional um, um, argument there. Next, let's go ahead and create a more advanced task called accounts that will list the accounts that we get uh, through our hardhat node and the balances each node holds currently. So here we set this one up a little differently because the async function is actually receiving the three arguments. The first one is task arguments. This handles all the arguments we pass onto the command line uh, um, from onto the command, sorry, from the command line interface, the CLI. We're not doing anything with it here, so this is going to be an empty object in our, in our example. Next is HRE. This is the hard hat environment uh, runtime environment which gets us access to different hard hat components, such as getting the list of accounts in our case. Um, you can also, you know, this is basically used to get um, um, various other things like getting balances. Now, this is an optional. Um, uh, so next one is run super. This is an optional argument and is only relevant if you're overriding an existing task. So this function works like JavaScript super keyword. It basically calls the tasks previously defined action. So you could override this behavior if you wanted to. In our example, we're not doing anything. So that's just to keep in mind. 
All right, so next we can run the local hardhat node with npx hardhat node and see, check it out. Uh, we have a lot of these accounts with 10,000 Ethereum. Let's try to execute our newly created task here with npx account, uh, hardhat accounts. And here we can see that all uh, it works as expected. Last thing we're going to look at is how you can create a subtask within a task. Um, you want to create a subtask if your task has lots of logic and want to extend or customize them that's when you would create a subtask. For example, the compile task on hardhat is implemented as a pipeline of several tasks. So it just calls the subtask like compile colon get source paths or compile colon um, build artifacts and so on and so on. The subtask function uh, works almost exactly like a task and the only difference is that tasks defined um, with, uh, with subtask won't be included in help messages. The way to create a subtask is to just use a subtask keyword, uh, but the rest of the process um, is the same as creating a task. Here we're splitting up the task of getting the balance as a subtask and then running that subtask under the accounts task using hre.run. Obviously, you can get more complicated than this. Uh, for example, if you want to create a task to reset the state of a development environment, you totally can. You can also create a task to interact with their contracts or to even package your project. So there's a lot of things you can do with Hardhead that we didn't cover today. So feel free to create your own custom task and fire away. Thank you and see you in the next one.